next we'll be looking at stresses in a thin walled hole section so this is so two follows the parallel membrane analogy so suppose we have a thin walled hole section and suppose that we pull a membrane over it this is all of the section so we pull a membrane over it and we go up some pressure we, we give it some pressure we apply some pressure uh, below the membrane it causes the membrane to blow okay so the shape of the membrane is uh, what i have shown here so the shape of the membrane is what i have shown here so let uh, the thickness of the section be considerably small such that the shape of the membrane formed is something like this that is the curvature is the curvature at the edges is so small that we can almost consider it to be linear okay so i have um, the the cross section the area of the cross section thin hollow section a is a the thickness is t so I have, as I have said um, earlier, uh, we we assume that the thickness is so small that the uh, what is it, gradient or the slope uh, can be considered to be uh, so can be considered to be linear or straight line. Okay. So in that case, if this is the slope, if h is the height and if t is the thickness, we can say that the slope is given by h by t here we look at shear flow so suppose that uh, the shear stress and development in the membrane is constant about its thickness so about its thickness the shear stress is constant but it can be about the cross section so here uh, we'll have to one we'll have two two but in this strip the stress is constant in this strip the stress is 2 2 and another step the stress will be 2 3 okay so this is very difficult because stress is obviously a function of uh, area so if uh, and as the stress is constant about this strip i can just write something like 2 and t is equal to a constant because obviously, as I said, the stress is um, constant about this strip. So this probably reduces the computation needed for a particular problem. And this thing is called as the shear flow, uh, which is obviously it is represented by Q. Okay, the shear flow is just a parameter which is used for for reducing computation and for ease of computation. And it is used for uh, thin wall sections where the stress does not vary with its thickness. Okay, it is very, very it is necessary to understand the stress does not vary with its thickness, but can vary throughout the cross section. So here I have uh, taken the height as h, or the height of the membrane as h, and t is the thickness of the membrane. You can see that h by t is a constant. Okay. So, in the earlier cases, um, where in parallel membrane analogy, we have taken Z as the height of the blown up membrane, and the slope is given by dou Z by dou X or dou Y. So, here dou Z by dou X is equal to this, uh, given by H by t and by parallel membrane analogy this is equal to dou phi y dou x which is equal to the stress okay so h is equal to dou t which is a constant as i mentioned just um, like two minutes before you can see that dou t is also called as a shear flow so the height of the membrane is analogous to the shear flow so we can use this we can interchange them quite we'll be interchanging them quite often okay so
So after this, we will be looking at the vertical equilibrium of uh, this membrane. So obviously, we have a stretch membrane which is being pushed or held in position by a pressure P. Held in pressure, held in position by pressure P. And if I take a very small section of this membrane, this close to this thing. I take a very small portion of the membrane. We can see that yeah, in that section, we can see that we have a pressure P acting on it. And the entire membrane, this pressure P causes a force on the membrane, which causes the membrane to be stretched. Okay, so this infinitesimal force is balanced by the surface tension of the membrane. So the pressure acting on the entire region is given by P into A. So if we consider an infinitesimal region on the, in the membrane, we can write it as uh, the f force on that membrane on that infinitesimal area is given by dF is equal to T into dS, where dS is the length. We can see that everywhere we'll have the component, or um, in this region we'll have T into dS. So we can obviously to find the total force acting on the um, membrane we we'll have just to integrate it over the entire length S. Yes. So pressure multiplied the projected area will give us the total force acting and this is balanced by a component of this surface tension. P is the surface tension of the membrane. We just have to find out the components that act in the direction of this force f okay so we can see that f this is theta so t d s into sine theta would be the component that acts against this force uh, against this pressure pressure force so um, if theta is very small we can assume that uh, there is approximately root tan theta also t d s into dz dz by dx so we have just written dz by dx as h by t. Yeah, uh, h by t or q by t. So this is equal to f vertical is dz by uh, integral over t ds dz by dx. So dz by dx is equal to h by t ds so t is assumed to be a constant so by applying parallel membrane energy we have uh, p by t becomes 2 g theta and z becomes d5 by dx so uh, d5 by dx becomes uh, the stress d5 by dx becomes the stress so if I insert a step here let's see area ds tau so tau is equal to q by t so again okay, tau is equal to q by t so this is very important because I mean, the last is very important because this is the generalized equation if, um, if the thickness varies with respect to the periphery the, if, if we go around the um, cross section and the thickness is varying with respect to the cross section, this term becomes very important. Okay. Next is the talk to find the talk transmitted. We just have to find out the um, take the product of force and the perpendicular distance. So that uh, dm. So if we consider a very uh, small element. And the force acting on the element is given by to s into ts ds. So this is q shear into ds will give us the force acting on the membrane. So force in perpendicular distance integrated over the periphery or the perimeter 
So we will have cyclic integral plus integrated. We will have uh, mt is equal to 2a q or 2a tau t. So we will get 2 is equal to mt by 2a t. So this is a generalized equation to find the stresses. So if the stress, if the thickness is uh, uniform throughout the object or uniform throughout the cross section, then stress will be uniform. So if the thickness is varying, obviously the stress will be varying. So you can see that if the thickness is uh, very small, the stress will increase. So for higher, for thicker sections, the stress will be lower. Okay. And from the above equation, that is g theta, we'll just uh, write the equation for the twist by unit length theta is equal to 1 by uh, or equal to g a. Okay, so this can be written in terms of uh, the moment of thickness. So this becomes equal to one by two t by two. Angle of this for the equation for angle of twist by unit length. Okay, these are the equations that we have to remember. So uh, we'll just uh, sever simple example that is, suppose we are given two circular rings. Okay, one is slitted, one is a whole ring, and suppose uh, that they have the same radius and same thickness. The same radius and same thickness, both are subject to the same tau t. So suppose that we have to find out the stresses acting on it and the twist by unit length. What do we do? Okay, and we have to compare. So suppose that the radius is very much less, larger than the thickness of the ring. So obviously in this case we can apply the equation for uh, thin rectangular section, and here we can apply the equation for uh, hollow, thin hollow section. Okay. So the equations here are j is equal to b t q by three. And the stress or the torque transfer is b theta j, and tau is given by 2 mt by j into x. Okay, so x is, um, I think I forgot to mention that x is measured from the center line. Okay, so obviously, one end will be here, one end will be t by 2, and the other end will be minus t by 2. So, in this case, we have b t q by 3, b is the total length, b, total length, here, as we have a very small slit, I have exaggerated this thing, we have very small slit, uh, so we will have length equal to 2 pi r, that is the perimeter of the circle, the rest is same, 2 pi r, t q by 3. So maximum stress would occur at at t by t. Sorry, t by two. So here we'll have t and t two and two will cancel out. So we'll have three by two and t t square root r. And entity square root. So this is the maximum stress. So max. Next is we look at the whole section. For whole section, the top transfer is given by 2aq or 2a to t. So from this, we can write 2 is equal to mt by 2at. Here we have uh, the cross section. Uh, uh, Thickness 
is uniform throughout the cross section and the angle of twist by unity length is given by 1 by 2 e into integral over s to dx mt okay so obviously we have area s by r square by substituting into this we will get mt by 2 pi r square into t so if we compare these two that is this thing this thing we can see this is r square that is 2 by 3 pi t square r obviously which is less than 2 pi r square t because r is very much greater than t t square is very much less than r so this term is very higher very much higher than this term so as we are dividing these things so we will have the maximum stress of the slitted section is greater than the maximum uh, maximum stress of the whole section 